How's it going guys? Welcome back to the show. The coming economic collapse, or in my opinion, the absence of the coming economic collapse. That's what we're going to talk about today. I see it often through YouTube and the media, and you're probably similar if you've clicked onto this video, that we've been told for many years that the world is going to end, or at least the economic side of it, and a whole new system's going to grow out of whatever is left. But I hold a vastly different opinion to that, at least in the next six, seven, eight years thereabouts. And I'm going to talk to you about that and why in this video and how we can capitalize on that cycle. So let's dive into that. Basically, we are entering the biggest period of wealth accumulation in human history. If you've ever been watching my channel over the last few years, you'd notice that I've talked about this multiple times, at least starting from around 2017. And it's based on the information that Phil Anderson, Australian economist, has put out for many years now, something that I started following way back in 2012 when I was into property investing and the property cycle back then. Just to give you a quick background on Phil, he pulls a lot of his uh, Austrian economics from guys from the early 1900s like Homer Hoyt, Russian-born economist Kondratiev, and Henry George. Like I said, I've been talking about this since 2017 on the channel, and Phil's got many videos and articles on his website going back almost a decade that I've seen anyway, but possibly into the 90s. And with that, Phil has been talking about the rise of the market since the low in 2009, saying that the bottom overall around the world, including the property markets, is somewhere around 2010, 2011. So he's been talking about the rise while the rest of them have been talking about the fall. That's another reason why I think this is really important to get into and share it with you guys. So hopefully we can all benefit from it and obviously make some better gains than the rest of the fear mongering uh, are leading us to believe. Now I'm sure most people aren't sold on the media's opinion that the world is going to end, but for some reason that information just keeps getting pumped out there and it keeps getting processed and we, we keep regurgitating it over and over again. So it's kind of led me to believe that although people aren't necessarily subscribing to that belief, that opinion 100%, I still think that in the back of their minds, they're thinking, what if? What if they're right? So with that in mind, let's dive into an interview that I was watching on the tube this week. It's from one of Phil Anderson's research colleagues, Akhil Patel. As you can imagine, they're research colleagues, so they have a similar view on the economy over the next decade, and they also have a similar view on smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Yep, I went there, let's move on. They also openly share their opinion of the economy on many public news outlets, like the one that I've linked down below, the one that I watched, which was on IG UK's YouTube channel titled, We are entering the biggest period of wealth creation in human history. Yes, I have a similar title, if not the same thing. Like I said, I left a link to that YouTube video down below in the description, so you're welcome to check out the original source. But obviously I'll warn you that these sorts of financial videos can be kind of dry, but I don't mind because I like that the emotion is taken out of it, the facts are given to me, or at least their opinion of how they view the economic facts, and I like to make up my own mind, which is what I've done here. So why is it important to learn about these old economic theories, these Austrian economic theories which were talked about and developed in the early 1900s? Why? Why is it important? I think it's important because it's quite possible that the news outlets are just feeding us a whole lot of crap that we really don't need to know and it's basically just a lot of repeat on the same nonsense to put a lot of fear into us and then confuse us with what's coming up next and on top of that to make them extra clicks because we all understand now that news is sold on fear. And it's also possible that the bull market could keep on running for years to come. So when someone tells me that the news and the media and everyone is saying that we're getting a recession and the world's coming to an end and they start throwing all these documents and paperwork at me that it's just got to happen, which they've been doing for years now. Uh, I've had many talks and discussions on Facebook about it and it just keeps coming. You know, all of the, the stats and figures on the employment and the property prices and all this sort of stuff just keeps coming and coming. When that happens, they usually point to different people who have provided that information. And I often say, where have they been right in the past? What are they actually talking about? How long is this down period going to last? What are they giving you? How can you work with this information? Generally, the people who are telling me this, they do not have an answer for that. I haven't yet come across someone who's had an answer for that and been able to capitalize on it, to actually use it beneficially to better their own life. Therefore, I tend not to use that information and continue researching and learning about the cycles in my own way. So with that said, and before I dive into more information about the cycles, let's see what information 
we can use to take away from this to then better ourselves. And I think it's pretty evident if we can understand the cycles better, we can have a better chance of profiting from them. And at the end of the day, that's why we're doing this, why we're learning from it. So we can better our chances at winning at the other end. By learning more, it obviously reduces our risk and reduces our stress. So there's another benefit to it. So let's dive into the interview. And as the title states on the interview, we could be entering the biggest period of wealth creation in human history. How you might ask, that's where the cycles come in. For starters, politics in the UK on both parties is leaning a lot towards infrastructure. And when infrastructure happens, there's a lot of emphasis on spending more money and growing the economy. So with all that spending, that leads the second half of the 18 year cycle to be bigger than the first half. I'll discuss the halves of the cycle in a minute, but first we wanna understand why the second half is going to be bigger than the first and how do we understand it? How do we see it happening in front of our eyes? Let's have a look at the US indices charts and we can see that a lot of those have broken to new highs recently as I record this on the 19th of December. 2019, they have been sitting at all time highs and slowly, slowly breaking out, coming back, testing old levels, and they are starting to make progress again as we enter 2020. That for one is a bullish sign. When markets are breaking into all time highs, that is definitely a bullish sign. Now, I know I'm mentioning a lot of new things here. Let's talk about the K wave before I get back into the 18 year cycle. K wave is the Kondrati Ev wave developed back in the 1920s. Essentially, it's a 50 to 60 year commodity cycle of ups and downs. So about 30 years up, 30 years down in the commodity prices. Now, why that is important is because that brings prosperity to countries and nations, nation states that are reliant on commodities. So if the commodity prices are increasing, then those countries are obviously gonna have more wealth and then that leads to more and more production and so on and so forth, buying, transporting, all that sort of good stuff. Global systems become more integrated, the world becomes more prosperous. So how relevant and accurate is this theory? And does technology play a part in this? There have been some suggestions that technology can speed up these cycles, but the research is showing that it hasn't actually affected the cycles thus far. You can look back to the 1800s when steam engines were invented and that cut down the travel time from the east coast of the US to the west coast from three or four weeks down to three or four days. That was a technological advantage of the day and that didn't have any effect on the cycle. And some people say, well, technology these days will have a stronger effect, but you could possibly imagine, well, I don't even know if we can imagine, that something like that, something of that greater significance, cutting down transportation times from weeks to days, just like the invention of the airplane and commercial flying happened decades ago, those sort of things we haven't seen in our lifetimes, obviously a couple of generations ago, but in our lifetime, we just haven't seen that. So is that the same deal? I don't know. Now to the 18 year cycle and the 18 year cycle consists of two seven year cycles with a mid cycle slowdown in between. So a first section of seven years, a slowdown and another seven section years up, followed by a four year decline. Seven, seven is 14 and four is 18. There in the middle of a mid cycle slowdown is included in those two seven years. Where exactly it happens, it's up to the cycle. None of this repeats 100%. It's on average over the last 200, 220 years or so that we have seen these cycles play out. And I'll leave a link to the 18 year cycle down below and you can see all of the time frames down there and how these numbers were calculated. So towards the end of the second seven year cycle, we see great acceleration in economic activities and asset prices rising a lot. Then we see the banking crisis, then we see the property prices crisis and that typically takes about four years for that to complete the clean out and everyone's sort of falling over and basically prices coming down. So like I said earlier in the video, the current cycle started around 2011, 2012, projecting 18 or so years forward, we could essentially see this end of the 18 year cycle come in around mid to late 2020s. So the mid cycle slowdown may only be shallow, quick correction, lasting maybe 12 to 24 months, which isn't that much considering the whole cycle overall is about 18 years. So all this information is well and good, but what are the trigger points? What are the catalysts? What do we look for as signs that the 18 year cycle is coming to an end? Like I mentioned in previous videos, there is the world's tallest building theory that when these buildings are all coming uh, to completion, 
that this is a good period, a good, a good place to look for the cycle to be coming to an end. The buildings are all built in a period that wealth is floating around a lot. There's a lot of money going on. There has to be for these buildings to be built. Think of the Middle East, think of China when they're building their 800, 900 meter, 1000 meter buildings to you know, keep competing with each other who's got the tallest building in the Northern Hemisphere. For those buildings to be built, for them to be borrowing money from the bank, there needs to be investors, there needs to be people with money who are willing to invest in these projects. When they come to completion, who is left buying these things? It's pretty much like a major Ponzi scheme and these Ponzi schemes take approximately 18 years, history shows us, for them to complete. And I know many people aren't going to take too kindly to me calling the property investment ladder, whatever it is, a Ponzi scheme. But when you think of it, when there's no one left to buy, what happens? Property prices fall. What happens in a Ponzi scheme when there's no one left to continue buying at the bottom? The property, the Ponzi scheme collapses. One last major thing to add to this greatest wealth building that we've ever seen in human history is that now that we are working in more of a globalized economy, a lot of these countries are all coming together at the same time. Think of Africa, think of Southeast Asia, think of obviously China, think of some of the South American countries, probably Brazil in particular. Everyone is working and growing and succeeding at the same time. Oh, don't, not, not to forget India as well in there. Uh, they're all prospering at the same time. And if all of these come to some sort of ending, you know, there's just as much of the investment as possible in these areas and they're all coming to an end at the same time as in you know there's no more money to go around to keep funding all of the investments in India and Africa and Southeast Asia Brazil all that sort of stuff then what's going to happen that's why I don't think we are going to be collapsing next year like we've talked about at the beginning of the video everyone believes 2020 could be the collapse 2021 that is the middle cycle slowdown this thing still has a lot further to go. That's the way I'm playing this investment game. I'm not ready to take my chips off the table just yet. Maybe a little bit to play the mid-cycle slowdown, get a drop, buy back in. But I see this going a lot further. Thanks very much to the work that I'm working, you know, learning from with Phil Anderson and Akhil Patel. And if you've gotten this far in the video and you still don't know what to do, Start by studying and learning about the markets that you're currently in. If you're not in any, pick up something and learn about that. What I mean is pick up the stock market, pick up property, learn about property stocks in the stock market so that you can take advantage of these cycles. Learn about entry and exits, like how to get in the market, how to get out. What I mean by that again is adding on top is like your money management. I've talked about that in previous videos. Go and check those out. I would have left some links up here or in the description as well, talking about how to divide your capital up so that you are not just throwing everything on the table at once. You know, we want to survive these uh, periods of decline so that we can prosper in the up periods. Like I said, there's a link to the 18 year cycle in the description down below. There's also the link to the Akil uh, interview on IG UK's YouTube channel. Pretty interesting, go and check it out. There's plenty more to learn about these cycles. So that brings me to the end of another mini lesson series of Australian economist Phil Anderson and his 18 year cycle. If you like these videos, I have more of them on my channel. I have plenty more coming up. So remember to subscribe, red button down there, click the bell notification and the like button so you get more of these popping up in your news feed and I will see you at the next video. Remember to comment down below. I'll get back to you on that. Uh, I'd love to chat further with people who are interested in learning more about the economic cycles. I'll see you guys at the next video. And until then, remember to take care and have more fun to get more done. Peace out.